From the outside, this North Carolina mountain bungalow looks quaint enough. But to Jamie Anderson, it's a house of horrors. Definitely, my heart's beating a little bit faster right now. It's, it's, uh, I'm anxious. Walking past Our his room, old bedroom window, kind of the memories come flooding back. <laughs> of the constant beatings and blasting prayers that he says were meant to drive the demons from his little body. Anderson left the Word of Faith Fellowship more than a decade ago. But he says the authoritarian church hasn't stopped trying to destroy him. I've been out for a very long time. And, and yet here I am, I'm worried about what are they going to do? What are they gonna, how are they going to lash out this time? Despite allegations of child abuse spanning at least two decades, officials around Spindale, North Carolina have done little to intervene. But a two-year investigation by the Associated Press has prompted state and federal authorities to re-examine the secretive church's controversial practices. The AP series has also emboldened dozens of former members to finally break their silence. But as Anderson has learned, speaking out can come at a cost. Childhood photos show a beaming, happy-seeming little boy. Anderson says those pictures are a lie. This was like a programmed thing of always be smiling, always have this happy face. It's the life of God is what they would call it. And if you're walking around without a smile, there's something wrong. And they're going to deal with you until you can have a smile. Anderson was just a little boy when his family joined the church, but he says he never quite fit in. When he cut his head while fooling around, his mother said he'd been marked like the biblical Cain who killed his brother Abel. I was Cain. I was anathema. I was accursed. I was all of these things. And I didn't know what I actually did to, des to deserve those names. It seemed he was always being punished for something. Once, when he was about nine, he says a church member held his arms outstretched while his mother sat on his legs and thrashed him with a wooden paddle. It hit me in many other places than where it was supposed to, but they didn't stop because I needed a breakthrough. The demons were taking me over. When the beatings didn't have the desired effect, Anderson says he was shut in a dank, windowless basement storage room. Curled up in the dark, he lost all hope. It didn't matter if I lived or died. When he was 14, Anderson says founder Jane Whaley accused him and four classmates of undermining church authority. He says the so-called five boys were taken out of school and isolated in different parts of the church compound for more than a year. It, it made everybody else, all the other kids, like, we're going to, like, walk the line because we don't want that to happen to us. When he was 18, Anderson left Word of Faith. His family disowned him. He managed to make it through college, then law school. But church leaders told the friends and family he'd left behind that Anderson was a drug addict who'd flunked out of college. Jamie left the church. Um, he had made his decision, turned his back on God, and he was going to hell. I totally believe that. But it didn't stop there. Late last year, about a month into his first law firm job, his older brother, who is still in Word of Faith, accused Anderson of trespassing on his property back in Spindale. I have a dream right here in front of me that I'm starting to achieve, and it just starts falling apart. Anderson easily proved that he was having dinner with friends in Charlotte, 70 miles away. The charges were expunged. Anderson's family and the church did not respond to requests for comment. Anderson says a line has been crossed. In theory, I understand. It's, it's a cult, and they're brainwashed. But I don't know if I can, if I'm capable of forgiving them for, for what they've done. Anderson worries that speaking out is dangerous, but he thinks about his little nephew and the other kids still inside Word of Faith. Because I remember, you know, thinking about it in that room and thinking, I wish that someone cared. You know, like, I wish that someone got me out of here. He's determined not to be like the adults who he says let him down. Alan Breed, Associated Press, Rutherfordton, North Carolina.